And so I'll play this video. I'll go over a little overview. So I'm going to give a little information about who we are at Atomic as a company uh, and why we're interested in Gaussian splatting. Then I'll pass it over to Francis, and he'll give an introduction to the library we heard about a little bit earlier today, FVDB, and, um, and why that's interesting for, for scaling out Gaussian splatting. And then we'll move on to uh, showing how we constructed this Gaussian splat you see here. Uh, using a challenge data set from, uh, from the city of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So we're at, at Atomic. Our goal is to help companies build out and scale their geospatial capabilities and to do this in a way that uh, advances open source and open specs uh, as well as giving these companies the capabilities to use There you go. Uh, <clears throat> to use their data in a cloud native way. And so we centralize our company on these three core principles of centralize, organize, and democratize customer data. What we mean by centralize is to uh, have customer data be stored in a cloud, cloud data store where it can be accessed, uh, accessed through the internet. So things like AWS S3, uh, Azure storage, uh, GCP storage, and then our organi organization layer is all focused around uh, what we have as a product called Atomic Flow. And this is a processing framework for one, bringing compute onto the data, extracting metadata, and then cataloging all of that in the open spec, the spatial temporal asset catalog or stack. So when we have all of that cataloged, we expose it through a, an open source project called the Stack API. This lets our customers uh, lets our customers search, filter, browse, and then access the data. And all of this uh, is is orchestrated through an open source Argo workflows framework, and then deployed either a SaaS or enterprise solution uh, via Kubernetes. And this organization layer then is served out and democratized for our customers uh, by with a layer of conversion frameworks where we can uh, convert customer data into cloud-native formats, so things like COG, COPC, uh, 3D tiles, GeoParquet, things like that. And so customers can access the data via our front-end application, Atomic Lens, or they can take that data and go into any, uh, any framework they like, things like Cesium, Omniverse, they query it directly from a Jupyter notebook and access the data directly. So that's a little bit about us, and I'll hand it over to Francis to talk through FVDB, geospatial intelligence. Awesome. Uh, thanks a lot, James. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about FVDB, which is a currently early access library for doing spatial intelligence, um, and uh, will be released uh, hopefully in September under the Apache V2 license, so uh, easy to use for everyone here. And when I talk about FVDB, I, I usually like to start by saying something kind of patently obvious, especially to this crowd, uh, which is that you know spatial data is everywhere around us, right? Uh, we use it in maps, we use it in digital twins, we use it in robotics, physics simulation, and, and so on and so forth. And I, I'd like to even say that um, kind of spatial intelligence uh, is a mainstream area of not only research but also product development. Uh, and, and when I say spatial intelligence, uh, things that you should think of are like neural radiance fields or Gaussian splats, uh, which take a collection of posed images uh, and then convert them into a, a volumetric radiance field, which can be rendered from any view. So everything you see here on the left, uh, it's not actually a video. Uh, it's a, it's a full-scale photorealistic digital twin. Um, another kind of thing that should evoke spatial intelligence for you is 3D generative AI, right? So that's using an AI model uh, to generate shapes and scenes. Uh, and so everything here uh, is AI generated, right? So this is uh, spit out from a, a diffusion model, um, whether text guided or, or not. And, and you should also think, of course, of 3D vision and perception, right? Uh, we want to reconstruct the world in the case of things like Gaussian splats. Maybe we want to do generation to like complete data or to generate new data. Uh, but also, we want to understand the world around us, right? We want to consume data, label it, you know, and, and then actuate in the world. Uh, and that's another form of spatial intelligence. And, and perhaps most relevant to the Cesium DevCon, 
uh, is geospatial intelligence. Right? Uh, so here we use spatial intelligence in the geospatial field uh, for a whole range of applications, from assessing disaster damage, uh, like in the video at the bottom left, uh, monitoring construction progress, like in the video at the top left, uh, creating maps, which I haven't shown here, but we will show soon, um, building digital twins, planning cities, and, and just so on and so forth. Right? I'm sure you guys can think of more applications than I can. And I'm trying to go to the next slide. So, one thing about doing spatial intelligence is it's just like really hard, you know? Um, and, and the reason is we're dealing with 3D data and 3D data is often sparse, right? You only care about it in, in some regions of space, not everywhere. Uh, it's not uniform. So when you build algorithms, uh, they have to handle data sets that vary widely in size. And, and oftentimes, most of the data sets that we care about just don't fit into memory, right? Uh, so we have, to build data, we have to build algorithms that can kind of scale beyond the size of the memory in a single GPU or, or, or a single uh, node. Um, and, and on top of the data challenges, uh, we need a whole host of new operators to build spatial intelligence applications. So think things like ray tracing and rendering uh, for visualization, ortho reconstruction, things like that, uh, sparse convolution and attention for building neural networks and deep models. Uh, and then all of this needs to be sort of spatially accelerated through uh, some kind of like advanced data structures and, and algorithms. And when uh, you know, I first thought of FVDB uh, a few years ago, I was at uh, CVPR uh, and you know, I was looking at kind of the, the latest and greatest research and, and I noticed that everything was small scale. Uh, and then I started looking into sort of products using spatial intelligence and I noticed that everything was kind of composed together by duct taping a bunch of little like small academic libraries uh, that didn't scale to large data. They had totally incompatible APIs. They weren't efficient. And, and you know, on top of making uh, you know, the applications work worse, the developer experience was just horrible, right? It's, it's just like not fun to code these things up. Um, and you know, that, that made me sad because I, I like you know, hacking on things. Um, and so, you know, from that kind of issue, FVDB was born. Uh, and so FVDB is, is kind of a unified framework uh, for building spatial intelligence applications that, that's built on top of, of PyTorch. Um, and so what we did was we took kind of a best-in-class graphics data structure called NanoVDB. Uh, so this is used to like simulate rocket engines at SpaceX. Uh, it's used widely across the VFX industry to do fluid and gas simulation. Um, and then we just kind of like built a whole bunch of AI and, and actually non-AI operators on top of it to like do like sparse volumetric data or to manage sparse volumetric data. And to sort of dog food ourselves and, and keep us honest, uh, you know, we, we published some kind of novel research on it. Uh, and now we've moved past the research phase where FEDB is now integrated into products uh, like uh, Atomic Maps uh, that James will talk about later. Uh, so really the key takeaway here is FEDB is a, is a unified framework for building out your spatial intelligence applications, whatever they may be, uh, that can handle high resolution and large scale uh, volumetric data. And it's built on top of PyTorch to leverage the GPU and optionally give you the ability to do deep learning, right? It's not mandatory, uh, but deep learning is, is awesome and you should be able to do it. Um, so it does a lot of things. Uh, I'm not gonna go over this. I don't like slides of text. Uh, but crucially, uh, the, the main thing that we're going to talk about today is uh, Gaussian splat training and rendering. Um, so I know there's been a lot of talk about Gaussian splats at this conference. Uh, it's a way to take images with camera poses and, and convert them into sort of this, this digital twin that you can then visualize. Uh, and, and why I think everyone's so excited about it is it's just much faster than classical photogrammetry. You know, you're talking about going from like days to run like coal map to like, you know, minutes even uh, to train a splat model. Uh, the reconstruction is just higher in quality uh, and it supports kind of real time rendering. Uh, and, and I think that's still something that we're figuring out as a community, like what the standards are and, and how to do that. But, but we've seen this, you know, uh, in practice and, and, and that's exciting. And, and, you know, in particular, uh, Gaussian splatting in FVDB uh, is production grade, right? So we wanted to kind of take the, the, these things that are in research and, and, you know, not really maintainable and bring it into something that you can use in production. Uh, so it uses memory very efficiently. Uh, so this is important, of course, for going large scale. 
Um, and it supports uh, multi-GPU. So, you know, again, we talk a lot about scale. Uh, you want to take the same code that runs on, say, a small scene uh, and have it run on really any size input. And, and the way to do that is just by kind of adding more GPUs, right? So, so you get this like nice horizontal scaling uh, without having to worry too much about writing new code. Um, and we also recently introduced a, a, a GPU accelerated meshing pipeline uh, that can mesh a Gaussian splat in seconds. Uh, so, so, you know, uh, something that took like hours on you know dense grid couldn't scale. Uh, now we can do like tens of millions of splats in, in seconds. And uh, I have an open pull request that, that scales this up by uh, another kind of like two to five x. But uh, we talk about that later. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to hand it over to James, who's going to talk about how uh, Atomic Maps is using FVDB in practice uh, to build some some really cool stuff. Uh, here you go, James. Thanks. Thanks Chris. Yeah, so we're interested in a Gaussian splatting pipeline because uh, of the, the new capabilities it offers, but also the capability to reproduce the existing uh, derivatives from our pipelines we have today. So here it outlines, uh, above you see it, our pipeline for photogrammetry. So we would start with the same place, get to feature matching and ex feature extraction, feature matching, then we'd usually go on and for like bundle adjustment, densification, steps like that in photogrammetry process. We'd end up with a point cloud, a textured mesh, and an ortho image. And what's interesting about FVDB uh, and has made us want to keep, keep developing and partner with NVIDIA here is that we can generate a Gaussian splat model, a very visually realistic model, but we can also extract a textured mesh from this. And we can also extract an ortho image and have those geo-referenced. And so we're able to uh, produce new outputs, but also produce the same things that customers might expect. Uh, and what is very interesting about FBDB is that we can preserve the transforms from real world earth center fix coordinates to the normalized training coordinate system, and then reverse that back after the training process and put our data back in its real world location. And that enables things like uh, possibility of future geo splats with real world coordinates for the splat locations. So this is our demo data set. Uh, this was collected in 2022 by the US Army and we've been working on this in, in partnership with NVIDIA and with MITRE uh, working on scaling out Gaussian splats. So uh, it was collected with a five camera system. So we have oblique images facing forward, back, nadir, left and right. Uh, collected in a grid pattern over Gettysburg, so about 6,000 images in total. We also have ortho images from the city mapper data set. Uh, these are on the right. You can see them loaded into our front end application lens. So they're there for searching, browsing. You can preview it quickly, the cloud optimized geotip in the browser, download it, or open it for a quick uh, visual inspection and annotation. We also do the same thing for LIDAR. So we've indexed it, uh, extracted the, the histogram of the classifications available, and you can render the cloud-optimized point clouds quickly in your browser and download. So this is an outline of our, uh, our training pipeline. So we start with photogrammetry steps, and then uh, where the power of scaling out our training process goes, we can split the model, and then uh, on our Kubernetes, uh, infrastructure, we have a uh, piece of, a, of open source software called Carpenter, which allows us to auto scale our compute processes. And so we can spin up X number of GPU nodes, send each, each one uh, a bit of data, and have them each process those in parallel, and then we merge the model at the end. So it enables us to, to really scale in terms of detail, in terms of, uh, in terms of the the footprint that we can cover in our Gaussian splats. So here you can see the results. So this was trained on, on four A100 NVIDIA GPUs. This covers uh, the downtown portion of, of Gettysburg. The first output, initial output, was about 8 million splats, which you can see is what's being rendered in the visor viewer, which is a, a viewer included in FBDB there. After filtering, we've got this down to about 6 million splats, uh, 6 million, million Gaussians. There's still quite a lot, but uh, the next step after here is how do we render this? How do we put this in a browser uh, and, and extract derivatives from this? And 
after listening to a talk yesterday from Cesium, I decided to load this into Cesium Ion and try actually tiling this to render it in the browser. So what you see here is a extracted a PLY file and then uploaded that to Ion and it was able to tile our Gaussian splat model and here I'm just viewing it in the Cesium Ion previewer and it, it renders and performs really amazing. We're really excited about the future of this, uh, of this spec. As you can see, move over to the college here and panning and zooming the levels of the detail is very good, uh, even at the single level of detail, like the tiling now. We can also load and index this into atomic lens. So we just load, right now in our product, we have uh, capability to load compressed PLY and plus compressed splat files, uh, but we have download capability both for the compressed and for the, the full resolution splat. And we're working towards being able to render larger splat scenes like is done in cesium uh, within our app. We also extract the ortho, which you can see here. Uh, the quality isn't quite up to, up to our source data set, but we're really encouraged and happy about this progress. Uh, I'm looking forward to keeping, keep going on the ways we can improve this. Uh, especially here, you can see the detail in the trees, which we believe is something uh, that might not be captured with high quality as high of quality if we were to do a photogrammetry approach. And then, yeah. Yeah, I, I could just jump in and talk about the meshing. So we, we, we now have GPU accelerated mesh generation, uh, which, you know, the slide was uh, produced a bit at the last minute. Uh, but you can take all of the stuff that, that James showed on the last slide and you can pull out a mesh uh, from it uh, in, in a few seconds. And I just wanted to highlight that uh, and you can take it over. Cool. Um, so once we have that mesh uh, extracted, we can load that directly into cesium ion again. So what you can see here is the mesh loaded into ion as 3D tiles. And now that it's available there, we can connect it to other applications too. So we can uh, use the cesium omniverse plugin to load the data directly, stream it from cesium into, uh, into USD Composer or uh, NVIDIA Omniverse application. And then that enables us to also run uh, some simulations on it. So just to finish off, this is a simple sun simulation um, and it enables us to integrate our data with USD, another open format, um, and start to build out larger scale digital twins from the data we've processed in Gaussian splats. And so that's, that's all we have. I'll just finish off uh, by putting some resources on there the path to, to look at the code, current code of FBDB, uh, currently part of the OpenVDB uh, software GitHub project in the, in the Academy Software Foundation. And then I've also put the, the link to stack there, the stack spec, but there's plenty of other documentation, it's very well documented spec, and I'm, I'm happy to talk about that if, if anybody wants to meet up after and talk about stack. So just like to also thank the Army, and MITRE, uh, NVIDIA especially, and uh, yeah, thank you very much.